Hello, I'm Kate McKay, and welcome for tuning in again to another episode of how to not only survive, but thrive during these challenging times. I'm really excited to introduce my guest today, and her name is Linda Mitchell. I'm going to read her bio, but um, clearly I have other stories to tell about Linda. Um, Linda Mitchell wants to help women reach a point of empowerment and glowing health. 55-year-old Linda is an Institute for Integrative, um, Integrative Nutrition graduate, an award-winning fitness competitor, woman's health expert, and elite obstacle course racer. This lady can kick some ass. Uh, she's collaborated on the fitness portion of the book, The Fat Flush for Life, with mentor and New York Times bestselling author, Anne Louise Gettleman. Linda is an author, podcaster, and fitness studio studio owner, all under the Sisterhood of Sweat brand. Um, after all, S-W-E-A-T, Sweat, stands for Strong Women Empowering Achieving Together. Welcome so much, Linda. Hi, thanks for having me, Kate. Thank you so, so much for being you. here. It's so good to see you as well. I'm just digging this, um, this platform, especially during this really intense time, you know? So talk to me because you have, um, you're like the fitness guru and you keep people motivated in the gym and outside the gym. So how are you managing this time right now, Linda? Well, you have to pivot. Uh, so with each thing that came down, whenever they gave us guidelines and rules, I looked at what the guidelines and the rules were, and I, when, it, when they said we could only have 10 people in a group or a gathering, then we had 10 or less people in a group or a gathering. Then we went down to five, and we spaced ourselves six feet apart. We sprayed everything down, and we wiped it down with bleach wipes and disinfectant, and nobody was allowed in if they had any type of symptoms or they were sick. But we also made sure to distance ourselves since you don't know the symptoms of the virus, you know, like you may have the virus and have no symptoms. And sure. that kept everybody motivated and going because um, I think having a schedule helps to create some normalcy. But then um, beyond that, beyond a lot of gyms closing, they finally said the stay at home order. Mm. So then we went to plan C, A, B, C. Okay. <laughs> so uh, now I'm coaching online on a platform like this. It's Zoom. And I have Zoom webinars so I could have 100 attendees. And believe right. me, I'm cracking the whip over the Zoom. I'm like, I haven't seen you come up in a while. And I see Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> so like, awesome. They start laughing because they're, you know, maybe they're doing their, uh, Navy SEAL push-ups and, and they're hard. Right. And, uh, so it was great because we could all chime in and just like we were in the studio and uh, keep working out. Because believe it or not, people are very, they were, that, the thing that they were the most upset about and just above everything was not being able to come in because they were on a roll and they were, they right. were you know, we were on a plan, we we're on a mission. And they couldn't come into the gym and they were beyond upset about it. Right. Linda, talk to me because you are such a bloody inspiration for so many people. And we've known each other for quite some time in our relationship. And we met originally actually in a fitness show. And the first time I met you, I just knew I saw something in you. And I remember looking at you and just like shaking my head going, man, this girl hasn't even tapped in yet. And man, I just love to see you soar. And it's been really amazing to watch you go. Um, what, um, because you've had your challenges in your life, and I know you've shared them in your book, which I, we will be sharing also in, this, in the notes here, um, yeah. which I was so blessed to do the foreword um, of for you. But what, yes. through your challenges in your life, what has been the consistent thread for you, Linda? The consistent thread through all yeah, the challenges? The consistent yeah, consistent thread for you. Well, I mean, we were talking about this before we started, so it's kind of a cheat sheet, but uh, survivor, survivor mode. I, I know what that mm -hmm. is, guys, because I was in a very, um, in a household where uh, my mother suffered from manic depression and, she, you know, she was a great, she was a great mom, very loving. She just had an illness. And mm -hmm. I was a child and I had to learn how to deal with it. 
and very suicidal all throughout my probably my growing up years and so um i had to learn to survive in that atmosphere and then your mother very, was suicidal huh? your mom was you, you you met your mom was suicidal yes yes mm -hmm. wow that's yeah. intense yeah yep. she had manic depression um you know which is a chemical it can be a chemical imbalance and so through no fault of her own she suffered with that and i just had to learn coping mechanisms and when I found exercise, exercise was a huge yeah. coping mechanism mm -hmm. and it made me happy and it gave me endorphins. And I didn't understand my mom's illness because I was just a child. So nobody really explained it to me. I just knew I didn't want to have that. Like, I didn't want to be sad because what happens when you're sad, you know, maybe you get suicidal. So, um, right. When, once I found exercise and how, you know, kept you motivated and positive and empowered, I started teaching it to all my friends in the neighborhood. And that's kind of how I actually started into fitness. I just found it by accident. Who knew it was nature's antidepressant, you know, number right. one. Amen. Isn't that so true? So yeah. what I see, I mean, because I know, again, we talked about like your, sur your, your survival uh, instinct really and so that can be either a pro or con right if you know we right, hear about right, this right. all the time with women who have you know ptsd and i think something that's really important to talk about with you in particular is because both you by you and i have bright light and we've both gone through a lot okay so like more than your average bear um you know with my with my loss of my son a couple of years ago and i know you you shared a lot of your own personal challenges and i appreciate and i honor you for doing that having the courage to do it but more than that, there is something about you that you have a secret sauce. And how were you able to retain that bright light? And how have you evolved that survival instinct to actually make it more about being a light for others? I think it, that I made a choice. Mm. I made a decision. When I was back, you know, we just, we kind of skipped over the whole fact that I married somebody that had manic depression too. And um, he was physically abusive and, you know, that was a horrible environment. And uh, I think just one day that, that flipped that switch, I was just mm. like, no more. I, I'm, you know, I'm worthy of more. My children are worthy of more. And if I have to get out there and dig ditches for a living, I had no idea because I had only been a stay at home mom and I got married right. so young. I thought I, I'm willing to do whatever I have to and not to live like this. And I think it was just one day when he came home, I normally would have left myself. I literally kicked him out and mm. turned it I, it was just like that that switch flipped within and i stood up for myself and realized what i was worthy of and what i was deserving of and guess what that word you like a lot to what was i tolerating right what was yeah. i tolerating mm -hmm. because of maybe my religious beliefs maybe my upbringing maybe the you know it felt sort of like homeostasis because of what i had lived before and so once I realized that I was worthy of more and I wasn't tolerating that, guess mm -hmm. what? It's, it was gone. It, it disappeared. And I didn't allow that. Wow. Anymore. Well, you know, I think that there's been a new science and I'm starting a, a new area of study because through the, um, I didn't realize it, but I guess I did grief differently than most people. <laughs> and I was like, the only way for me to greet the loss of my kid was to just fall into it and be like, all right, grief, here I am. Work my ass, okay? I wasn't going to hide from it. And this is from a positive person that has done a lot of, you know, good work in the world, but people were watching me, okay? So as a public figure, I felt like I had a responsibility, listen, not only to my son to heal, but also to the population just to show people that we can do it differently. And there is such a thing as post-traumatic stress. I absolutely, my, listen, my brother was murdered at the same age my son was when he passed, all right? So I knew trauma. Trauma was in my karma. It was in my family of origin, okay? So what I learned is that we have post-traumatic stress. That is legit an issue. But you know what the beautiful thing is, is we also have 
post-traumatic transformation. We can right. transform through suffering. And that is just a game changer for me. And I, that's what I see in you. And I think that, again, we talked about this a little bit before. This is a level playing field right now, Linda, for all people. And, you know, I'm asking the viewers, you know, here and now, where are you ready to step up, shaking and shivering? What are you tolerating that you're no longer willing to tolerate? And who are you going to bring in to support you as you rise up? Right. And, and it is choice, too, because, mm -hmm. like, when I, I still remember going, I w the first job I ever had, you know, God, I believe, directs our steps. And the first job I ever had was at the YWCA as the fitness director. I didn't have the education for it, but they gave me the job. At the time, I didn't. I've, I've since gotten a lot of education under my belt, but they gave me the job. And I remember we were upstairs and they had asked me to help in the women's shelter, which is, you know, perfect for what I was going through at the time. And uh, there were a lot of women in there telling their stories. They were all sitting around in a circle. And it just really struck me when I heard one woman talk about 10 years or, you know, and, and she was no longer like um, married to the person. It was just like, it was like they were living in their story. Wow. They were yeah. living in their story. Mm -hmm. And right then and right there, I made a choice. I was like, I am not going to live in my story. I'm not going to live what happened to me. Mm. I left because I'm going to change my story. And right. then inside, I was like, I knew in my heart, I wanted to have a place for women that helped support them because I felt like that's what I didn't have was that support mm. system when I needed it at the time. And I wanted to build and develop a support system someday when I had the resources. Right. And I just wanted to help other people change their story. And mm -hmm. so the beautiful thing is, is no matter what happens to you, because I feel like I had to put a helmet on every day in that marriage. I never knew what was going to happen. I never knew what bomb was going to go off. I never knew when he was going to explode and what might happen. And I, I feared for my life for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think that, you know, you can have anything, some, something can happen like that, but you still have the power of choice, no matter what is going on in your life, whatever's out there. I mean, yes, we can get sick from a virus and we could be in the hospital. That might be a little bit different, but right now I can choose to socially distance myself. I can choose to wash my hands and I can find another route for my business. I don't need to stay in despair and chaos. Mm, that's so good. And considering the fact that you came, you were birthed through chaos and the fact that you were able to create systems and structure is an inspiration for sure. So what are some strategies? I'd love if you would share some strategies with me because you deal with a lot of women in overwhelm and your business is, is fundamental in, in around that word empowerment. And how can we support each other as we move through this time, Linda? Well, stay connected. Mm -hmm. You know, awesome. even if you have to do it on the internet or be a, do FaceTime or call your friend, uh, you know, right now, that's the way you got to stay connected. We stand together like, uh, I think it was Mitch McConnell said, but we stand six feet apart. Yeah, that, that's so great. Perfect. Yeah. I, I like that. But I think right now, you, you know, we got to do what we got to do. We got to pull. I mean, I'm going to just say, because... I don't know. You're probably talking to men too, but I was going to say, pull our big girl panties up and you know, the only way out is through. And so yeah. you got to get a little tough and you got to be like, okay, this, it is what it is. What can I do about it? Like, you know, what could I add to my routine that makes it feel normal to me? You've mm. got to keep that self care. I think you've got to be diligent about that self care right now. If you want to feel good and you want to go through this like a champion, then self-care is number one, number one. Amen. Yep. So agree. And it can be however you want to structure it, but it just has to be right there front and center. It just, it just, it has to become non-negotiable. And I know a lot of people are doing, you know, cocktail hours and wine night and everything else. And that's awesome. But what are the ways that you can support each other's personal and spiritual growth and physical health 
and not just the one connection of just over vino, right? I mean, it's just like, there has to be other ways that we can support and do that. And I think that that, well, let's be creative in how we structure that time for sure. And the, you know, having the routine, like you said, the structure, because what is chaos? It is no structure. <laughs> yeah. So you're missing some of that structure because it makes you feel secure to have a structure. Mm -hmm. So I think just picking maybe three big things that you want to accomplish in the day and trying to knock those things out will help, you know, to at least make this trying time a little bit better. Yeah. And so um, I heard that in China after like in Hunan, what they've experienced is a huge stress in relationships, like divorce has been going through the roof. So how oh, has? Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because people are all of a sudden stuck with people that they don't like that much, right? So, I mean, this is legit what's happening. And I already feel it fraying a little bit in the relationships that I know. Like, you know, my husband's home, my wife's home. They don't want to talk about anything. I have never talked to them and really had a structured, intimate conversation. I deal a lot with men. So, uh, you know, men are very much generally isolated anyway. So I'm deeply concerned about men at this time. And of course, uh, poor, the poor and elderly, of course. But what would you say to people? Oh, how would you structure conversations with your partner if you're feeling disconnection? I was going to make a joke. Have lots of sex. <laughs> yeah, that's not a joke. That's for real. That will help. No, it's not even a joke. Yes, have more sex is absolutely. It's immediate communication. <laughs> that, that builds everything. It's good. No, that's a good point. Um, no, work together. together. You know, you got a choice here. You can either work apart or you can work together. And, you know, any great team works together. So, you know, you're going through a rough spot right now. Don't make it worse by fighting with your partner. You know, maybe mm -hmm. now is not the time to pick a fight or bring up something sticky. Right now, focus on the matter at hand and deal with the other stuff later, I think. Yeah, on some level, that's true, right? Because also when we're in hibernation mode, we are going to find characteristics and qualities that just because we're anxious, we're going to project that among other people. So just be conscious and aware that your anxiety or your stress is yours. So own what is yours and not project it onto other people. And having yeah. powerful conversations sometimes is just saying in the morning, hey, listen, I feel like this today. You know, just talk about what you're feeling. And that, that right, includes right. your spouse, your children. I mean, having that meeting where you guys are all just, just start having conversations. Just start, you know, one sentence watch, at a time. Don't watch the news all day long. I mean, if you want to be stop. afraid all the time, I remember... I was watching the news a lot and I think it was probably during impeachment. I don't know. Who knows? There's been so much right. news. So and much. I could not sleep at night because I was worried about the state of the country. I was having yeah. nightmares. And that's when I was like, you know what? That's it. That's what it's stemming from. I need to stop filling my mind with this crap yeah. because you can have a lot of fear mongering, you know, going on in the media and every channel is talking about it. I mean, you just can't get it off your mind. But when I walk outside and it's a beautiful day like today and the birds are singing and my dogs are chasing each other, my puppies in the yard, I'm like, you know, I think it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. You know, I right. think you just need to get out in nature a little bit. If you, if you could take a walk or you could, you know, take a hike. Um, it's a good reminder that the sky is still blue outside and the birds are singing. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? That's so true. That's so good. So how are you, how is your body holding up? Cause I know you've had some, you've like a war, like literally viewers, I'm telling you, she's a warrior. How are you feeling physically? You feeling good, nice and strong? I actually am. I think I'm making a roaring comeback and it's happening right now during the coronavirus. So I, was, great. I was doing things in my workout the other night and I was like, Hey, Hey, I haven't been able to do that in a while. So yeah. I'm feeling pretty strong, but I've been building myself up. And I think that's important thing to do right now is to build your immune system up. Um, right. I think I was working too hard when I was competing and I, I should have been doing things in place like taking collagen and, you know, building myself up. So right. I looked at my life and I said, 
oh, my body's breaking down because I'm beating myself up. Right. Yes. I'm beating myself up. Why am I beating myself up? Is this really mm -hmm. worth it? Is it really worth it for, for some accolade? You know, how many trophies do I really need? Like, yeah. seriously? I know. I and it was just like, we just burned through those, right? I mean, you and I did a lot of, you know, we've done. Yeah, I, like I, I have 35 or some odd amount. Like, yeah. what? any more of those like just to myself I realized I was I was it was time to start building myself up and fortifying myself getting rest getting sleep um doing workouts that make sense you know that aren't gonna hurt my joints that you know just building my body up I'm 57 I want to be healthy till I'm 109 I don't know right. however however long so and how do you how are you satisfying for yourself uh, that competitive piece of you? Like, how do you measure that for yourself? Because you're an athlete and you're a competitor by nature. In what ways yes. are you like, this time, are you still like fired up in that? My husband would say, I'm like, pumpkin loves me more. <laughs> With oh. our dog, Snickers. Yeah. So last night I was like, she loves me more. Yeah. I love the and, and you know, oh. he was like, it's not a competition. I said, uh-huh. Yeah, it <laughs> is. is so That's funny. so good. That's but, so good. Um, <laughs> I've been pouring into the one. gym, really. I was pouring into the gym, pouring into the gym, and uh, into speaking. I've been doing that, and I had just come back from speaking at PodFest. Uh, we barely squeaked under the radar. So awesome. Uh, because we traveled to Florida, and then this all broke out. I mean, like, it was going on, and then it was like, no more travel. Yeah. Wow. So that's good. How'd that go for you? Good? Oh yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations, Absolutely. man. It's been a progress. So what's up for you in the next few months? What's going on? I want to be respectful of your time because I know you have clients waiting. Well, let's see in the next, well, we're going to, we're going to rise from the ashes, whatever is going on with this coronavirus. Yes. And then we're just going to, kick it the rest of the year in the gym getting people in the best shape in the best empowered lives they could possibly live mm -hmm. supporting one another you know another in our sisterhood yeah. and i plan on uh traveling and speaking and helping people with their self-esteem and confidence and making the right decisions in their life no, yeah, that's awesome. Linda, thank you so much. I really appreciate this time with you and I deeply respect you and stay healthy and blessings to all the viewers. If you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to Linda. She is Zooming, so maybe she'll have some space for you. And she's in Ohio. So, um, but we are now worldwide in our way that we can communicate and work out. So thank you very much and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks everyone.